right, uh, a very good morning uh, to all of you, uh, wherever you have uh, arrived from today. Uh, I've got the pleasure to, to welcome you today. Uh, my name is uh, Dick Lindebaum. I'm the incoming editor of a journal that is very close to my heart, the Academy of Management Learning and Education. Um, on, on behalf of all colleagues involved in running and developing uh, the journal, uh, a very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, we have gathered here today not what you think, uh, to showcase pathways through which researcher engagement with wider stakeholders can improve practice at work and also in management education. And as I soon will uh, outline in more detail, uh, the journal is uniquely positioned to, um, to be at the forefront of impact debates. Hello. However, uh, the journal AMLE is also so much more than that uh, because um, when we consider how impact work is generated in and through the pages of AMLE, uh, we can see there's a natural opportunity to, to showcase the pathways through which uh, the work generates impact. Um, yeah, so let me tell you two stories. Earlier this year, I was fortunate enough to pre present a paper in Lausanne, Achistee Lausanne. Uh, there were even special forces on campus that day, but it wasn't of me, because of me giving a talk, it was actually Emmanuel Macron visiting campus. Uh, in that context, <laughs> I met a colleague who took a visible pride in her teaching of postgraduate students on the subject of sustainability. Her argument was as concise as it was powerful. What greater impact to have than to help students learn about sustainability and apply these insights in organizations, be it in governments, NGOs, or other organizations. She recently published a report uh, funded by the World Wide Fund and the Sustainability Solutions Network in Switzerland with the title, The Integration of Sustainability in Business Education. Another story. My teenage son recently joined me for an hour-long car ride to the airport to pick up relatives, having learned uh, just learned that Dad took part in a podcast on ChatGPT and management education. He proposed we listen to it on the way to the airport. Little did I know. He was actually interested in, uh, in the conversation on how the technology changes our relationship with knowledge in fundamental ways. More curiously still, uh, he talked about the podcast the next day with his teacher at school, who has an educational interest in the technology. Why am I sharing these stories? There are two reasons for it. First, I'm telling these stories because they underline just how important and positioned AMLE is at the forefront of impact debates. When we publish articles on pedagogical innovation, as you can see, for instance, the paper co-authored with my colleague April Wright, who can't be here today because of train strikes, or on the need of new curriculum contents, uh, Laura Colombo, my colleague, We'll talk about this today. Then these articles achieve impact on students and future managers through our teaching. The aforementioned report underlines that clearly. Students need to be equipped to face the present and future sustainability-related challenges in organizations. I'm delighted to note that AMLE references feature prominently in that report. And we should not forget, as argued in a recent book, that business schools, I quote, teach students at a scale rarely seen in other disciplines, and these individuals go on to inhabit man managerial roles in a range of organizations. Second, while quantifying incarnations of impact in the sense of audible or recordable occasions of influence, arising out of research play an important role in current impact debates. Both examples suggest limits to quantifying impact, where the pre-test, post-test design often represent an ideal type. The fact that some instances of impact cannot be measured doesn't mean it is not there. AMLE articles also feature regularly on the AOM Insights website, an AOM initiative designed to help translate actionable suggestions for managers based on AOM published research. Most AMLE papers discussed today, I'm delighted to say, are actually featured on that website. And of course, the very event today is testament uh, that uh, AMLE is closely uh, considering issues around impact and engagement, as opposed to impact featuring as a mere afterthought in the implications section. This development has grown into a non-trivial problem. Recent research underlines this problem. So it's a recent uh, paper by uh, Hemant uh, Aguinis and, 
an AMP, the Academy of Management Perspectives. They basically um, found uh, that uh, they explored uh, the policy implications of organizational behavior and human resource management research based on reviewing more than 4,000 articles in the years 2010 to 2019. They found that policy implications are underutilized because only 61 articles or 1.5% included policy implications. And the take home message was very clear. Uh, OB and HR research risks to become socially irrelevant. That's their terminology, not mine. Uh, another example by my very esteemed uh, colleagues, co-authors, fellow editors, uh, Peter Fleming and Bill Harley. Uh, they coded uh, in a recent article around 5,500 articles uh, published in top tier management journals between the year 2008 and 2018 and found that only 2.8% of articles critically addressed global grant challenges, such as inequality, climate change, racism, and gender discrimination. So building on that, uh, at AMLE instead, we encourage authors to put impact center stage when papers are being revised. Further, any acceptance letter now highlights that this acceptance is not the end, but merely the beginning of a conversation uh, um, with wider stakeholders. How to do that? Uh, there's a usual pathway of using social media to increase the possibility of entering an impact conversation with stakeholders. I'm more interested actually in creating conditions of possibility for impact. It's, always, it's not always very straightforward to make measurable, but at least we can try. So possibilities of entering an impact conversation with stakeholders. In the past, personally, I have involved university press offices to prepare press releases on published research. Andrew Hill, on, on my left here today, uh, he wouldn't be here without these. Uh, we can also write for HBR or MIT Sloan Management Review to connect with practitioners. And looking at Elizabeth, where are you? Thank you. I'm just reminded how rewarding uh, it is to write these pieces. Don't tell her, it's also very difficult, but it's a different subject. There is still more to come. Uh, the idea of research-led teaching could be amplified if authors were to complement their published work with teaching notes. That's something we're currently developing at AMLE. I'm reminded here of the example of a, of a professor from a, in finance at the London, School of Eco, London Business School. Uh, he made a, the case for, um, for companies to deliver both uh, purpose and profit. With an eye on impact, he provided free online teaching notes and slides to help other teachers use his book in business schools and beyond. And, it has, and, and he has been invited to speak and share his insights. Again, this is a great example of uh, how research-led teaching creates uh, conditions for impact on students in the classroom and their future, career, future careers. And who is to predict how and why a challenging book will change a reader's outlook in fundamental ways forever? Uh, if in doubt about it, uh, please uh, have a look at the book, uh, the, the classic book uh, by Adler and Doran. It's called How to Read a Book. <laughs> if the aforementioned podcast influences my son's relationship with human curiosity and knowledge-creating processes toward taking ownership of ideas, could this be measured? Who would decide if this is impact or not? The wider point I'm making here is that we can be quite entrepreneurial in thinking about pathways toward impact, acknowledging that impact work is often uh, not highly regarded and rewarded uh, uh, compared to so-called A-star publications or A-star applica uh, publications at the level of institutions. Uh, one way to think about this could be along the lines of Weber's essay on science as vocation where he asked the essential question, what are the conditions of science as a vocation in the material sense of the term? This question lends itself for paraphrasing, and I hope he can bear with me on that one, into what are the conditions of impact as a vocation in the material sense of the term? Now, these material conditions concern both individual creativity of researchers in seeking to generate impact be it more measurable or more phenomenological, and structural arrangements that can both enable and constrain said creativity. Now let me start with these structural considerations. On a more Sandrin side, in a recent Sage White paper on impact by Usha Haley and Andrew Jack, 
My colleague Renata Meyer argued, from an uh, editor perspective, that journal editors can encourage, develop, disseminate, and acknowledge research that has the potential to unfold positive impact. Specifically, she proposes, and I agree with her, to make impact count in the entire research project from the start, not as an afterthought to paper acceptance. She goes on. Uh, journal articles uh, can and should only be one format among many uh, different formats as journals seek to professionalize their dissemination efforts. By contrast, while many academics aspire to generate impact, a global SAGE survey of social science academics found that, I quote, only a third said that having external impact mattered for tenure, awards, and funding further research. A third of respondents similarly stated that the institutions provided no reward or acknowledgement for having external impact through research. And I think it's important to recognize geographical variation here. It's handled, this issue is very, diff, handled very differently in the US compared to the UK, for instance. Uh, after all, within many business schools, the assumption still runs strong that we must publish or perish. And many early career scholars receive cautionary advice to focus on academic publications as a priority uh, on the so-called A publications. In a way, this is already highlighted in the context of the uh, FT Responsible Business Education Award last year. It was noted that the authors viewed the uh, published research a combination of intellectual or originality and a focus on pressing social issues and efforts to engage organizations to bring about change, just as the beginning of the conversation with stakeholders and not the end. With this in mind, uh, impact as occasion could mean Bring the ex uh, existing possibilities for impact, uh, for impact uh, based on, on, on our own original research into everyday conversations where appropriate. In times when information uh, spreads fast, uh, one may never know uh, about uh, the surprising effects that this might, might have. We can move on. Let's look at uh, today's uh, menu, uh, the papers we discussed today. Uh, Laura Colombo, who, who's uh, joining us on the right here, Laura's paper combined uh, different tools to improve uh, uh, outreach activities. She produced an inside article, video uh, 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 material translation, and even had things um, and material translated in Italian. Um, she supported other institutions. She, I even managed to persuade her to come to, no, not to come, but to, to give a seminar on sustainability for our uh, sustainability work group in, in Grenoble. She joined that effort. I was very pleased to, to note. So she, she's very busy on the uh, outreach uh, uh, front. Uh, Garima's paper, she's joining us in the front here. Uh, her paper, uh, published in AMLE, obviously, was driven by insights, by the insight that improved practices cannot be solely based on research practices that look back, but finding ways to co-create forward with managers and leaders. And to this end, uh, the uh, Innovation uh, North uh, Lab was, was set up, and it's still ongoing, it's still thriving. And uh, it's a great uh, example of academic, uh, academic and uh, practitioner collaborations. Um, April's paper that she's co-authoring, again, uh, she can't be here today, but at, at, at Warwick, for instance, they started to draw on the findings of that uh, paper in faculty development to encourage greater thinking about and uh, experimenting with different types of objects in physical classrooms and how they can aid uh, student uh, group learning. Uh, finally, Amal's paper and Bernd's uh, paper, they have designed research and teaching and consultancy projects focused on the leadership knowing doing gap. They have developed a set of reflective and interactive exercises that have been tailored to various audiences and contexts. All these examples show that being entrepreneurial in one's impact efforts can put pressure on, on, on business schools to adopt wider criteria, wider criteria of uh, recognizing work. But perhaps uh, the event today can help move things along on the, on the institutional side as well. Why should it be such a hassle for us to, to demonstrate impact uh, and institutions are not, not recognizing it? So that's my little hope for today. So uh, I, have, um, I hope that the information shared so far sparked your inquisitiveness. Uh, if it's only activated halfway, then I hope that introducing the keynote speakers will do the rest. Uh, we are absolutely thrilled to welcome two individuals who most definitely have something important to say for today's event. 
On my left, I'm very happy to introduce Andrew Hill. Andrew Hill is a senior business writer at the Financial Times and a consulting editor uh, for FT, uh, FT Life. He's a former managing, management editor and columnist, city editor, financial editor, and comment uh, and uh, analysis editor. You've been very, very busy. Uh, he's the author of Leadership in the Headlines, uh, a collection of columns and Ruskin Land about the enduring influence of Victorian thinker John Ruskin. He joined the FT in 1988 as uh, the first one in the graduate program. Second, ah, uh, I was close. Um, and uh, he was also a correspondent in Brussels and, and Milan. He was named business commentator of the year uh, 2016 and uh, commentator of the, uh, in the year 2009, uh, where he also received the uh, Decade of Excellent Reward. He was recently uh, part of a podcast at Copenhagen Business School with the title, The Pursuit of Impact, where he was asked what it is uh, that business journalists are looking for when considering published academic work. I, I stop here now, <laughs> otherwise he, he might have nothing to say. <laughs> so. Um, Moving on to our second uh, keynote speaker, Elizabeth uh, Heichler. Uh, she's the editorial director at MIT Sloan Management Review, where she acquires and edits full-length research features. And she creates all material for the print magazine. Uh, prior to joining uh, the journal, Elizabeth spent three decades as a journalist covering information and communication technologies. And apparently, she's very good at what she's doing. She, as one LinkedIn post said, she is sharp. She's a sharp, innovative content strategist and a fantastic editor. And from my experience, I couldn't agree more. Uh, in addition, we are excited to have lead authors from the, the four AMLE papers. I have uh, referred to them before, but of course, you deserve a full introduction as well. So in front, I have uh, Garima Sharma. She's an assistant professor at uh, Kogod School of Business, the American University. Her research focuses on sustainability social entrepreneurship, and related tensions of purpose and profit. Again, I have to extend the apologies for April. She will join us later via video link. April is a professor of organization studies at Warwick Business School. Her research explore, explores how institutions are maintained, changed, and disrupted, uh, with a particular focus on professions and professional work in diverse contexts. Laura Colombo is a senior lecturer at the University of Exeter Business School, and her research focuses on issues of scaling in relation to social and cooperative enterprises and alternative food networks. Amal Amadi, on the left, is a lecturer and program director at Henley Business School, uh, University of Reading. Her research focuses on leadership, leadership development, and workplace emotions. Each of these papers today is supported by uh, by, uh, uh, by four uh, discussion facilitators, Manuel Ramirez. He joins us uh, from the far right corner. Thank you, uh, Manuel. Uh, Lisa Anderson, you can see her on the right. Thank you. Tim Edwards, I guess he's stuck on the train. He, I'm, I'm sure he will come. And uh, uh, Christine Moser, who very, very uh, spontaneously stepped in for uh, Amanda Godal, who was, uh, uh, she's um, suffering, unfortunately, from ill health. So, I would also like to point out that we have two associate editors in the audience here today. So if you have questions about AMLE, please uh, strike up a conversation with them. It's Laura Colombo and Christina Moser. Finally, and of course, he is a dean and he has the excuse not to be here because he's an important person. He has to attend other meetings, but he will join us later. But for the record, I am delighted to that uh, Professor Andre Spicer, dean at uh, Bayes Business School, uh, will also join the event. Uh, he will share his perspective on impact and management research. But I'm not only delighted that he's uh, joining the event, I'm also very grateful that he agreed generously to host and sponsor this event. Uh, and in that context, I would also like to uh, express my appreciation for Miranda Lewis, who took the lead as local organizer. Thank you so much. 10 out of 10, Miranda, thank you. <laughs> the ideal outcome for today would be that you take some inspiration about pathways to impact away from this meeting. And that any question that you might have uh, has been answered. If you feel you want to ask any speaker involved in today's event uh, any further questions, I'm sure they'd be delighted uh, to engage in a conversation with you. Should you have any specific questions about the journal, uh, we are here to answer any questions 
And if any ideas occur to you after the event, uh, you know there's a thing called email. And we will respond, I promise.